Hi guys, in today's video we're going to talk about whether or not stevia, the non-caloric sweetener, destroys your bi motor complex and what you should be using as a sweetener. First, a little bit of a backstory. I've seen this come up on social media posts and Facebook posts and the blogger sphere, and I thought that this really merited addressing. Because the way that these articles typically talk about this and the way that it's presented, it makes it sound like stevia is intrinsically, specifically bad for your migrating motor complex and somehow damages the MMC. And that is just not something that's substantiated or supported in evidence right now. The genesis seems to be, when I went back through some of those blogs, for example, and tried to look at resources, all of them point back to say that Dr. Pimentel, who's a researcher out of Cedar sinai he has said in some capacity, whether it's at a summit or a conference, he has mentioned that stevia inhibits the migrating motor complex. And that's all I could find. I can't find any research articles. I couldn't find anything really on PubMed. I couldn't find anything that specifically addresses this. Rather, it seems like this is probably from his experience and his working with patients. So I don't want to say that that clinical experience is invalidated because it's not. But what I would say the question really should be is not so much does stevia destroy the MMC or does it inhibit the MMC? The question is whether or not that's unique. And that's really the whole point. It's not necessarily that stevia is intrinsically bad or intrinsically particularly bad for your MMC. The takeaway to know is that your gut is controlled by the brain. There's a bi-directional or two-way street communication between the gut and the brain. The brain is going to perceive via sight and smell and time of day and circadian rhythms, all of that the brain takes in and it lets the gut know what to anticipate and says, hey, stomach, we are chewing now, so we need you to make some juices. Or hey, pancreas, we need you to make some juices, whatever the case may be. So the brain is perceiving the world around you, gathering that information in whatever way it can via the five senses, and then it's sending the message to the gut to let the gut know that it needs to prepare to digest your food or be in a rest and digest state, which is really what we're talking about with the MMC. So when you're eating, the brain is perceiving the taste, the smell, again, the circadian rhythm of like, oh, this is lunchtime. All of those things are going into whether or not the brain knows you're eating. And as soon as the brain realizes that you're eating or you're about to eat, it sends a signal down to the gut to say, hey man, you need to go into, hey, we're eating mode and get out of that rest and digest MMC mode. So don't bother, you know, sweeping the floor and getting the bacteria out of the small intestine. I need you to figure out how to make digestive juices, stomach acid, pancreatic juices. You need to focus on that right now because that's what we're about to do. So get chip chopping. And the thing is, a lot of things will do that. So your brain will perceive the sweet taste from stevia and then it tells the brain, hey, we're eating something. So you shut down the MMC. Oil or fat also will be perceived by the brain as food, as caloric food, and then it tells your, your body to not have an MMC wave. Protein, this is supposed to be a T-bone steak if you're wondering. Protein, likewise, will inhibit the MMC and carbohydrates and fiber. All of these things that we normally find in food will inhibit the MMC and inhibit that cleansing wave, that sweeping wave that helps get rid of the bacteria in your small intestine. It's not intrinsic to stevia. It's not like stevia is particularly bad. At least the current research doesn't support that. It's just that your brain perceives all of these stimuli the same way and says, hey, we're eating, go shut off the MMC. And this is something too, I'll try to find my old blog post and I'll link it in the doobly-doo down below if I can find it. Years and years and years ago, like I don't even know, 10 years ago, I wrote a blog post about artificial sweeteners and my stance was that Based on the research that I'd read at the time, granted it's a few years old now, it seems like a big part of the artificial sweetener thing and why they are not as good for weight loss as we once believed they would be is because your brain is getting crisscrossed messages. So on the one hand, if you eat, say, aspartame, an artificial sweetener, and you can kind of like lump, you can lump stevia in, even though it's not an artificial sweetener, just follow me and kind of go with this. Something that is non-caloric or an artificial sweetener like stevia or aspartame or whatever they are, generally speaking, seem to tell the brain, hey, we're eating something sweet. So the brain says, cool, let's make juices and let's like make saliva and do the whole kit and caboodle. But then when nothing actually reaches the stomach or when no calories get into your system, it's, it's confusing. It's like the brain can't trust itself almost. Like, wait, I thought we were eating. Son of a gun, like, I guess I was wrong. 
And it seems to muck up some of that signaling of like insulin and glucagon and the satiety hormones and all of the, the hormonal and neuroendocrine regulation between the gut and the brain just gets really confused and jarbled when you send that mix mass, mix, mixed up message. That was harder to say than it should have been. So rather than thinking, you know, what is the expression? There's no such thing as a free lunch. We can't be this like sugar crazed society and that'd be like, well, we're gonna outsmart nature and we're just gonna have something sweet that doesn't really have calories. Well, bada bing, bada boom. It doesn't necessarily pan out that way. As smart as that seems, it just hasn't really panned out that way. Where most of the artificial sweeteners seem to muck up the signaling between the brain and the gut and that that can mess with your satiety, your hunger signals. And that actually can lead to more weight gain because it's like your brain's trying to catch up on the caloric deficit that now it perceives. Now, stevia doesn't seem to have, at least, again, a few years ago when I wrote that article, it seemed like stevia was not as bad as far as like the gut-brain connection mismatch stuff. But I do think that it's perceived to a degree where the brain thinks, oh, we are in eating mode, not MMC mode. And that's the key takeaway, is that it's not like SIBO patients should avoid stevia or IBS patients should, av should avoid stevia because it's intrinsically bad for them. I think it's actually a perfectly fine sweetener for IBS and SIBO patients. The key is you want to use it at mealtime and then you want to have two or three distinct meals in a day and not be the person who's snacking and munching and grazing all day. Or you don't want to be the person who is in the middle of your day and then you have some stevia in your tea or your coffee and then you break that fast where you're going through your day and then you have some aspartame gum or some aspartame soda, it probably is going to be enough to signal to your brain, hey, we're eating and shut down your MMC. So executive summary, don't worry about stevia as long as you're having it around actual meals and you're not like having it scattered throughout your day and you're not grazing and you're not putting it in beverages. I think that stevia is a totally fine choice for IBS and SIBO sufferers alike because it probably does not inhibit the MMC any more than actual food does. Just keep in mind that there's no such thing as a free lunch. So if you overdo any of these non-caloric sweeteners, you do run the risk of really confusing your brain and making, making that gut-brain axis really mismatched and confused. So use stevia, don't douse your food in it necessarily. It's strong enough you don't have to anyway, but go ahead and use stevia. Don't worry about whether or not it's safe and continue having your treats in moderation. And of course, if you just watched this video and you're thinking, crap, like this really like throws me for a loop. I don't know what sweeteners to use or I don't know what to eat and I have SIBO. Good news, I have two ways that I can help you beyond just YouTube videos, although I have plenty of those, so go ahead and peruse my channel and I'm sure you'll learn a lot. Number one is that I do see distance clients outside of the state of North Carolina and in North Carolina. So if you're local, I would love to meet you in person, do a physical exam, do some visceral manipulation, the whole kit and caboodle. But if you're somewhere else and you have been hitting a dead end and you can't make the progress that you think you should make, go ahead and look at my website and you can set up a time to speak with me and we can see if we're gonna be a good fit to work together. We could do the vast majority of this functional medicine stuff and this nutrition and herbal medicine over Skype or Zoom. So that's very, very doable. Go ahead and check out the link in the doobly-doo below. Likewise, there's another link in the doobly-doo below for my online course, FODMAP Freedom in 90 Days. Now, registration is closed and we're already moving into the fall 2020 cohort, and I won't be enrolling again until 2021. But if you would like to learn more, I have most of the information about the course still on the waitlist page, so you can learn about the course, what we're gonna accomplish, what we're gonna do, what kind of goals that we're gonna set, and then also you can get on the waitlist. That way, when we go into enrollment around the new year, you will be the first to know when FODMAP Freedom in 90 Days gets out uh, is out again, and you can get in on the first day bonus because I always do a bonus for people who register for it on the first day of registration. I look forward to seeing you in the next video or possibly in FODMAP Freedom in the future. Have a great rest of your day. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.